The best is yet to come, stunning sky anomalies, Archangel Alion is focused, we always have another notch. The day is now 36 hours and starts and ends at 3 am or 3 pm in an alternating fashion. At the time of this post 11 colon 11 morning gate, on the 3D date 62220, the following 3 pm will start this new day. Simply follow this parallel around the globe until it hits your local time at 3. If you are cognizant that a new day has begun, it is customary to send love and kindness to someone. Today's date on the Archangelic calendar is Infinity 07A9 Infinity Infinity T1A7 T1A8 A9 Infinity Infinity I5 G5 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 Infinity Infinity B1 T T Infinity Please visit us at archangelicalendar.com for more information. And please do not forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Gaia is in the earth, setting which solidifies her motions in a very real way. It also solidifies the notion that Gaia is very serious about inspiring change and that seems to be the only consistent that we are facing at the moment. The feelings inside of us all are heavily influenced by her mood and when she is sitting in an earth, dominant setting you can expect to speak on her behalf. If something comes up unprovoked, it is most likely coming from her influence. The sky is stunning, keep watching is the best is yet to come. We keep hearing about light and lightning anomalies that will be awe-inspiring. It is said that this will be something that was not thought possible, but no one will elaborate more upon the subject than that. In conjunction, we will see the electrical sparks from an increased rate and frequency of seismic activity. The tectonic plates are moving way faster than expected, but we hope to release some pressure in today's assignments. We must mention the actions of Archangel Alion in this context, who is making some profound changes to Earth via the dust cloud. He says that it will have something to do with the light show but that his intention was not that, and he has a very specific target in mind. He also emphatically mentions that he will not yield upon his target for any reason. As predicted the shaman is putting on a show, but this is nothing to is what it could be if we had the technology to measure the incoming upgrades properly. Speaking of, the 4 colon 15 upgrade is giving us new energies and thus new sensations that are foreign to our galaxy. We can't help but wonder what initiated these energies, but I am sure that we are about to find out. The Blue Avians are known as an extremely friendly and helpful race and they wish to make their healing services known to our legions. They also wish to lend their services as intergalactic guides as well, if you are having a hard time finding something related to our assignments, call upon their wisdom and they will show you the way. The highly publicized exit of three of their predominant members of the Avian's highest guard, has been greatly exaggerated, and although they have parted ways, they insist that they pose no threat to anyone and have left on civil terms. In 3D News MSM is still trying to incite, justify, and support violence, this is because the deck is stacked on all sides and a cover story is needed. The number one aim to this agenda is to disrupt the US election process, and without constant propaganda, this agenda simply will not work. If you are involved in a sneak attack, you have admitted your ability as beneath the being or beings that you have stricken. There is a certain level of honor that one must exude if they wish to work with higher metaphysical powers, and all sides must abide by this or their power greatly diminishes. We have mentioned this before, but it seems that now more than ever, your geographical location is relevant to your energy work. You can do much more good in your geographical jurisdiction than anywhere else, this does not mean that you are not effective elsewhere, but people seem to have more intensity when defending their own turf. Today's tools. Tools will be active until the next post. Use the legend below to help you decipher how to best use today's weapons. Passive equals no intention needed to use or arm. It will work on its own when you accept its presence. All you need to do is give permission and it will work on your behalf. Active equals intention needed to use. Aggressive equals will attack before anything has a chance to do any harm to you, beyond space and time. We have gone through great changes and thus the weapon-based tools indicated below can be inserted into the ground to call forth downloads. Active, passive and aggressive. 
The Violet Flame team has returned to Violet and stayed in 9, this means that it is primed and ready for transmutational purposes. The Violet Flame team is as follows, and is in no particular order, Archangel Jermaine, Archangel Ansel, Archangel Briathos, Archangel Emmanuel, Archangel Raguel, Archangel Zadekiel, Archangel Dabriel, Archangel Af, Archangel GZ Rail, Archangel Tatrasil, Archangel Agla, Archangel Harahil, Archangel Eshma, Archangel Sablo, Archangel Abraxos, Archangel Harahil, Archangel Nuril, Archangel Galizur, Archangel Orion, Archangel Batkol, Archangel Adonachil, Archangel Abastahan, Archangel Vermeil, Archangel Adonai, Archangel Dikviel, Archangel Baradil, and Archangel Eshma. Active. Archangel Michael's legendary sword can handle anything, as it is completely omnipotent, no level of consciousness can be achieved that this couldn't slice through. It is also an amazing weapon against electronics and technology as it can override any circuitry. Passive, active and aggressive. Archangel Isik's radiant field looks a lot like Magneto's Phosphield and it reacts to any life form with either loving energy, or with a transmutational blast of vast power. Passive and Aggressive Archangel Leo's Swords of Plenty is a passive and aggressive attack sword that has a complete will of its own. Do not try to yield at all, you will only get in the way, equip and go. Passive and Aggressive Archangel Shepherd's Orb is a presence of divinity that allows anyone that you are engaged with a clear path to forgiveness or a direct audience with infinitely expanding creator source on the matter. This is a truly compassionate tool of divine orchestration. Active. Archangel Zagzagal's Staff of Heavenly Might rains large crystal masses upon a targeted area. Great for large targets, works on the physical and non-physical as well. Active. Archangel Zedekiel's Staff of Justice is a tool that is best used on a macro level and can help move things along that are stagnant. It can also summon and maintain force fields for protection purposes. Passive. Archangel Iophil's Boutinia enhances the beauty of yourself and all that you survey. This like all passive tools must be given permission to work on your behalf. Passive. Archangel Jadotun's radiant sounds attract the most wonderful people to your life as well as enhance your surroundings with beautiful cosmic sounds. It's basically a happy enhancer. Passive. Archangel Jefiska's atmospheric bracelet brings an element of fun to your nights. Jefiska is the archangel who is in charge of gatherings, in case you are so inclined to have one, she would be the recommended party planner. Please note the next three tools are healing modalities and can be sent remotely to loved ones. Passive and aggressive short range. Archangel Kalesia's radiant rays of health wards off all diseases and illness. It can also aid in the recovery of diseases already inflicted, it can be sent to land masses as well as individual living beings. Passive and aggressive short and long range. Archangel Thelia's radiant compassion sends heartfelt love to all within your jurisdictions. This is the nurturing aspect of healing and is in it has incredible warmth. It is best to yield this with a calm frame of mind. Active. Archangel Raphael's healing staff is an omnipotent healing force that works gradually or intensively depending on how you yield it. It is considered the best general healing instrument. Today's assignments. We are still working on a macro level, and thus the format will stay consistent, please use today's current tools if you need assistance performing the tasks below. We always have another notch to turn it up, I feel that we have been very docile in our efforts thus far as if we wanted to swallow a continent whole, we could implement strategies to do so. Luckily, we have a deep moral and spiritual codes in which we operate by, otherwise, there wouldn't be much anyone could do to stop us. The point of this is to say that no matter where the global climate takes us, we have a higher degree to operate from. This is never to be taken lightly, nor is the responsibility that divinity has bestowed upon us to regulate the energy of these highly volatile times. That being said, if the malevolent ships above earth do not leave, we hold no morals against making a spectacle of our abilities. There is a giant ship that we have been chasing that is now parked above Australia, there's no coincidence to the cyber and other attacks afflicting the area. The lightworkers in Australia really need to handle this assignment as directly as possible, of course, all of our legions are on this as well, but as aforementioned your proximity may play a role. Certainly, there are levels of consciousness where geography doesn't matter, but it does not seem to be the case for the median collective of lightworkers at the moment. 
Australia really seems to be organized darkness number one target. We must do our absolute best to cleanse the communication lines of Australia by directly flushing these pathways by using strong silver lightning bursts, then do the same for the global communication lines as well. This is because most of the attacks are electrically based and if we do not flush the malevolent energy from the pathways, we may see a mass string of possessions. False message replays play constantly and place uncomfortable messages into our subconscious. These can cause anything from anxiety to suicide, and these machines must be destroyed. They are usually located in remote areas, but the best way to locate them is to locate an echo, a sound wave of indistinguishable chatter, and follow it to its source. Then disrupt them with a sword and shield. You can completely cripple these devices and with enough force, they cannot be repaired. To relieve some planetary pressure, open the wheel at the bottom of the Sea of Galilee, by spinning it clockwise. This does many positive things for our human vessel and Earth, but it also does many things to ease the pressure building up inside of our planet. This will hopefully ease the calamity that is inevitable upon the current 3D timelines, and it is our hope that a new timeline will emerge where great suffering is not involved. As mentioned, Gaia is in an Earth, dominant setting and thus she is ready to receive energetic assistance. She can easily recharge given enough rainbow plasma, so please, engulf the earth with rainbow plasma for at least a 72 count and again with emerald green flames for an additional 72 count as well to promote healing. Today's mediation is below, please enjoy.